Hello, I'm Rick Williams. And I'm Alicia Vitarelli. Tonight on FYI Philly. This is Cha Cha Cha! We are celebrating Broadway. And we traveled the country to get a sneak peek of the shows heading to Philadelphia. Yes! Musicals making their Philly premieres. Theater is poetry. And those backed by popular demand. Let's go! Plus, we preview the upcoming season for the Philadelphia Orchestra, Ballet, Opera, and Philodenko. Oh, beautiful. And check out the dining options, too. Can you fry some chicken? Hey everyone and welcome to FYI Philly. We have a very special show this week. I have a very special co-host and we got dressed up for you. I am happy to be here. It's showtime. You ready? Oh yeah. You know how much I love the theater. The upcoming Broadway series is one of the biggest seasons yet. Broadway is back in Philadelphia in a big way with 14 productions in the new season. Almost 50 Tony Awards won between them. And with a diverse mix of shows. People want to get back to the theater and they want to see shows that might challenge them a bit, but they also want to see shows that they know and love. And four of the Philly premieres are hot off Broadway. We were lucky enough to get a lot of tours in their very first season. <laughs> Tina, the Tina Turner musical, is the first subscription show of the season. And it's produced by Tina Turner herself. It's high energy with powerful music and choreography and a life story that is both tragic and awe-inspiring. It starts when she's a little girl singing in a church and it ends with her singing in front of thousands of people at the largest concert ever in Brazil. It's very honest about her life, how she grew up very much unwanted by her mother. Everything she went through with Ike Turner and the abuse she suffered under him but she succeeded on the other end and she inspired so many behind her I say that Tina Turner is the roar of Broadway it feels like a lion's roar it makes you want to stand on your feet it makes you want to cry you feel so many emotions going through the show it is an epic epic story. And it comes to Philadelphia just in time for Thanksgiving. Giving thanks for Tina Turner. Just make sure you get your butt in those seats. It's not fair. You can ring in the new year with Jagged Little Pill, based on Alanis Morissette's groundbreaking album of the 1990s. They use the songs and create the story of a family in crisis, from addiction to gender issues. Also, Alanis was deeply, deeply involved in the show. It was nominated for 15 Tony Awards and took home a Grammy for Best Musical Theater Album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you like Alanis Morissette, you're really gonna like the musical Jagged Little Pill. Broadway is known mainly for musicals, but a soldier's play takes the stage in late January. Soldier's play is set in barracks in the South in World War II. There's a leader of the black section of the army and very rough and tough and hard to get along with guy. His name is Sergeant Waters, and when he's murdered, I come in as a lawyer to try to figure this out. It is a murder mystery, but within that, there's a whole lot of other stuff going on. What does it mean to be an American? What does it mean to be black in America? It's a very powerful play, and it's a really compelling story. Philadelphia-born playwright Charles Fuller won a Pulitzer for the work. It won the Tony Award for Best Revival Play recently. And if you don't already know the story, the ending may surprise you. Truly, we don't want to spoil it, but you get drawn in, and you want to know more, and you want to know more, and the plot thickens. If you love the musical Hamilton, you'll want to see 1776, too. Yeah, this is a great show, all female and gender neutral, a multicultural cast, but telling the story of the founding fathers. So it makes you think about if this was more than just all white men making these decisions for the future of the country, would they still make these decisions? It opened in Cambridge, Massachusetts this summer, then heads this fall to Broadway. And then immediately after, it will begin its tour here at the Forest Theater in February. It's a masterpiece, I say. And the Forest Theater is just steps from where the history happened. It's really thought-provoking and a really engaging, very intelligent musical. And also, I mean, you'll learn a lot about parliamentary procedure. <laughs> The Six Wives of Henry VIII take center stage for Women's History Month. The show hit Broadway last year, and it's blown up on social media and on stage. When I heard it the first time in the British accents, I was just like, oh, Americans are going to eat this up. So we headed to the nation's capital for a behind-the-scenes look. We are backstage at the National Theater. Where the Tony Award-winning costumes... Yeah! are on full glorious display. It's like almost like gothic architecture. I love it and it's like pretty sexy. The show is a mashup of a Broadway musical and a pop concert. It's basically almost like a sing-off. A girl group of pop stars all trying to acclaim who's number one in the group. Listen up, let me tell you a story. 
each takes the stage with a solo singing her story. The cool part is we also are each other's backup dancers and backup singers. So we become sort of their entourage, their girl posse. Elevating the wives to more than the powerful man they married. Divorced. And the saying they've become known for. Die. Divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. It's incredibly fun and danceable. I think it represents the unspoken voices in history. Beheaded. But it's also a moving show. It's showtime. Beetlejuice introduces Tim Burton's 1988 cult classic movie to a whole new generation. Welcome to a show about death. Combining horror with outrageous comedy. It follows the story of Lydia, who is obsessed with death and the afterlife. Because I myself am strange and unusual. And Beetlejuice, a character from the netherworld who's obsessed with the idea of living. And all you gotta do is say my name three times. There's a brand new score along with beloved old songs. It's a huge audience favorite. That beautiful sound! We headed to Hollywood to be transported to the Moulin Rouge in turn of the 20th century Paris. This is where all your dreams come true. The musical is a revival of the 2001 movie and 10 years in the making. That's how long it took to get the rights to the 75 pop songs in the score, covering 160 years of music. The premise is that our lead, Christian, the composer, writes all the greatest love songs ever written. The costumes and set are decadent and lush. We really wanted to make sure we delivered all the spectacle of the film. The story, a mashup of other Broadway musicals. With hidden love and forbidden love. It's such a spectacle, you can't help but be drawn in. Yeah. The artist, Toulouse Lautrec, is a club regular. It is so immersive and ebullient. And there's the wealthy Duke playing the villain. I think I've a medley of uh, Rolling Stones. The show is spending this summer at LA's historic Pantages Theater. It's coming to Philadelphia's Academy of Music July of 2023. It's everything you want from a night out. Subscribe to the Broadway series here at the Kimmel Cultural Campus and you get tickets to all seven of these premieres. There's a five show package too, featuring some of Broadway's favorites back by popular demand. We'll run down those shows when we come right back. This week's FYI Philly is sponsored by the Kimmel Cultural Campus. Welcome back to FYI Philly and our special celebration of the Broadway series coming to Philadelphia this fall. We are at the Academy of Music, the oldest continuously operating opera house in the country. It's so majestic mm -hmm. and one of three theaters where you can see the fantastic Broadway shows coming to Philadelphia this season. I'm so happy they let us up on the stage. Gorgeous. <laughs> The Lion King has engaged audiences for more than two decades. People are always singing along. Fans got a chance to dance, too. Take your fingers and say everything we see. When performers from the show took the stage at the Kimball Cultural Campus during Philadelphia's July 4th festivities. We are all singing together. The Lion King has won more than 70 global theatrical awards. It's a huge physical production. With a cast of 54 performers, several from South Africa. They bring such joy, the music, and the motifs within the show are part of their culture. No! The familiar story follows Simba as he tries to find his place within the pride. He sets off on this journey of self-discovery. It's about strength and it's about family. It's a show that really resonates with all generations. Music from Elton John and Tim Rice drive the show. He lives in you. While the costumes include masks and puppets that creator Julie Taymor calls the double event. It's absolutely gorgeous. The Lion King comes to Philadelphia next summer, the final show of the Broadway series season with an extended four week run. A unique and incredible theatrical experience every time you see it. Annie is the season's opening act. You're never fully dressed without a smile at the Miller Theater. I love you. The show features classics like It's a Hard Knock Life and Tomorrow with a fresh perspective. A new generation, a new cast, a new scenic look at it. It's a gorgeous ride. The story remains the same. It is a story of a little girl who believes in a better tomorrow. As she figures out how to win over Daddy Warbucks. That positivity, that absolute belief in a better day is the thing we need right now. It's the hard knock life. 
It's funny, it's moving. A direct hit to the heart, you feel it. So you gotta hang on till tomorrow. Tomorrow, the sun's gonna come out. It's gonna get better. Les Miserables is making its pandemic delayed return to Philadelphia. This was actually supposed to open March 17th of 2020 at the Academy. It will be one of the first performances for the touring production since the start of COVID. It's like Broadway has just pulled itself out of the theater and, and gone straight into your nearby theater. The latest iteration of the classic musical unveils new elements for audiences. The tone of how we tell the story has changed. It has all the wonderful musical things that you've grown up with and loved, but we don't have a revolving stage. They do have projections that create a new palette for the production. Very colorful, real spaces, real places. It was based on the original artwork of Victor Hugo. The arc of the characters continues to be relevant despite its 19th century setting. We've just been through our own COVID experience. The plight of certain characters we can totally empathize with. I had a dream my life would be. And for superstitious Philadelphians who share a love for the theater of football. The last time Les Mis played in Philadelphia in 2018 was when the Eagles won the Super Bowl. Could happen again. Cats returns next spring. Now and forever. It's another Philadelphia favorite. They sell out almost every performance. People just love seeing it. The Broadway classic puts performers in full feline form. From the intricate design of the makeup that helps create the character. This is the floor. To the mesmerizing moves of the actors once they take the stage. They're just like cats. You will hear the famous Andrew Lloyd Webber songs like Memory and Jellical Cats. Jellical songs and Jellical Cats. This is just one of the classics that people still really want to see. What should I do? The rock opera Jesus Christ Superstar returns during Easter season of 2023. It's the classic score by Angela Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice. The story of Jesus' last days are told through song. It was a game changer when it first appeared in the late 60s, early 70s. It's not dissimilar to really what happened with Hamilton in that you had a group of contemporary people come together with this historic story and be able to make you listen to it and hear it afresh and anew. This revival of the classic was created in London. At this amazing creative space called Regent's Park Open Air Theatre. And brought to America to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the original, delayed a couple of years by COVID-19. With the pandemic, people's relationship with faith, whether that be religious faith or family or whatever that is, has sort of got deeper. This production puts more emphasis on choreography to tell the story. Dance is one of the oldest forms of expression and dance has been closely linked with religions like throughout history. <laughs> We use this idea of like blessings and ritual um, to create repetitive movement. And the story seems to resonate for audiences of all religions. It just studies what faith is. People of many different sorts of um, heritages of faith can, can really tie into that and can really relate to it. And if we do return to you, we'll make your pain a Come From Away is coming back to Philadelphia in February. It's one of our all-time audience favorites. It's a true story that unfolds in the days after the September 11th attacks. When 38 planes and thousands of passengers were stranded in the tiny town of Gander, Newfoundland, the people there opened their homes to them, they opened their hearts to them. Canadian husband and wife team Irene Sankoff and David Hine traveled to Gander for the 10th anniversary of the events in Newfoundland in 2011. We got to meet not only the locals who were there, but also all of these people who had returned 10 years later to reunite with these lifelong friends they had made. It was an amazing experience. They wrote the story based on that trip. Come from away is the term that is used for people who aren't from Newfoundland are called come from aways. One of the highlights is something the creators experienced themselves. There's a ceremony in the show called a screechian. <laughs> It's how Come From Away became fully embraced by Newfoundlanders. You have to kiss a codfish, which is really disgusting, and I would do it again just to be a Newfoundlander. But the heart of the show is what brings fans back. It's an incredible place to realize that we could be that way in the world, that we could reach out to strangers in that same way and welcome them in. Now this Broadway season is about to wrap up with Dear Evan Hansen playing August 16th through the 28th. And you can find a link for tickets to that in the upcoming season at 6abc.com slash FYI. Or just scan that QR code on your screen and it'll take you there. And of course, the holidays are always a big time for Broadway. The kids are out of school, so people come to the city to shop 
and do dinner and a show, right? Of course, and yeah. that's why you'll always find a family-friendly favorite playing the week between Christmas and New Year's. And this year, it's the Blue Man Group, and we headed to the Big Apple recently to catch them in action. The Blue Man Group is known for its unique style. Blue Man shows her that community happening experience. Burning Man meets the 60s meets the current theater age. It's something artistic director Michael Dolan knows very well. I began as a performer at the Astor Place Theater here in New York. Nearly three decades later, he still feels passionately about the performances. It really is an experiential thing. You're greeted by this character who must find out about us in order to end the evening. The stage show has grown from Broadway to national tours, and now it is international. We don't see this as putting on a mask. We see it as the removal of the social mask and reveals almost the curiosity of a child. Let's go! We recently tagged along for a blue man disturbance at New York's New Little Island Park along the Hudson River. Every performance puts blue man skills on display. The first thing you do is start catching stuff in your mouth. That is requisite number one. Blue men love tubes. That's their main instrument. It takes a special performer to put on a blue man show. All they have is their eyes and their body. They can't use their mouths. They're right behind me, aren't they? And for someone who spent much of his career with the group, that blue mask is always a part of you. Once you go in, you never come back. Well, Michael tells us they'll be doing a New Year's theme show in Philadelphia and playing some holiday music. Oh, that sounds incredible. They'll be performing December 27th through the 31st. Yes, we see what's on tap for the orchestra, Philodenko, ballet, and opera when we come right back. Welcome back to this very special FYI Philly. We are at the Academy of Music, getting ready for the start of a new Broadway series here in Philadelphia. The musicals are a huge draw, but so is the music, dance, and storytelling from the Philadelphia Orchestra and the resident companies of the Kimmel Cultural Campus. It's the Philadelphia Orchestra's first full season back. The season's called Transform. It's all spectacular. It reflects the new partnership between the orchestra and the Kimmel Cultural Campus including an old favorite with a new name. The Miller Theater, formerly known as the Merriam. Among the new leadership goals, to spotlight social issues and make the campus more accessible to the community. September 10th is arts launch. We opened the venue for a free day of performances. Opening night for the orchestra is September 28th at Verizon Hall with music director Yannick Neze Seguin. Just a huge celebration with the great pianist Lang Lang. We're also collaborating with the super adventurous Ballet X. The ensemble will be joined by composer and flautist Valerie Coleman. Performing Valerie Coleman's Umoja, which means unity. Coleman's recognized for Seven O'Clock Shout, celebrating healthcare workers. Philadelphia Ballet begins in October with a magical evening at the Academy of Music. We start off with Cinderella which is set to the score of Prokofiev. It features the choreography of Ben Stevenson. It's just a family delight. George Balanchine's family tradition, The Nutcracker, will run the holiday season at the Academy of Music. To see those smiling faces, there's just nothing better. Opera Philadelphia is kicking off its festival O22 in late September. With a production of Toshio Hosokawa's The Raven. It's a one-woman opera based on Edgar Allan Poe poetry that'll be staged at the Miller Theater. This interactive experience, which the audience is really a part of the show. There are 30 different performances in all across multiple venues. Rossini's Othello from Shakespeare will play at the Academy of Music. Experience of vocal fireworks. There are three tenor roles. There's opera on film, too. Some 30 opera films. Including the world premiere of Black Lodge, a mix of horror and rock and roll, inspired by David Lynch's Twin Peaks. Very surreal. For the winter concert, Opera Philadelphia Chorus and Orchestra meet at the Academy of Music. We'll be doing Carmina Burana. It'll be paired with Credo, prose taken from W.E.B. Du Bois. Philodenko takes the stage in late October with Continuum, featuring four next-generation choreographers, including three Philodenko alum. The now and the new and the next is just simmering upon them. Just that arm. The choreographers have been working with the dancers for two years now. 
all producing Philodenko premieres. We want to make it fresh. We want to make it new. Philodenko has new leadership, too, with Kim Bears Bailey picking up the reins from legendary founder Joan Myers Brown. Philodenko is a national treasure here. We're celebrating 52 years now. And my objective is to continue with the legacy of the company. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. We know we covered a lot there, but as always, we've posted links to all of those performances on our website. And to make it even easier, you can just click on that QR code on your screen and we'll take you there immediately. Now, if you're looking for dinner and a show, we check out the food and drink options when we come right back. Very important, and that includes oh, yeah. a new option coming soon. This week's FYI Philly is sponsored by the Kimmel Cultural Campus. Welcome back to FYI Philly and the Academy of Music, an absolute gem on the Kimmel Cultural Campus. We are celebrating the upcoming Broadway season, but you know, dinner and a show are two words that naturally go together. In fact, they're my favorite two words. <laughs> Same. The Kimmel Cultural Campus serves up the entertainment, of course. And the food offerings are the magic of former Iron Chef and Philly favorite, Jose Garces. Volver Restaurant on the ground floor of the Kimmel Center offers a taste of Chef Jose Garces' travels around the world. Volver serves as a great backdrop for culinary creativity. The restaurant closed with the theaters at the start of the pandemic. Can you fry some chicken? And when the curtains rose again last fall, the former Iron Chef introduced a new chef in residency program. Where I get to collaborate with local chefs bring their flavors, highlight them as local talent, looking at diversity and inclusion as a big part of this. The inaugural residency featured six emerging chefs featuring everything from Hawaiian. This is a shoyu ahi poke tostada. To Cambodian. It's packed with flavor. And Korean American fusion. This is Chef Alex's fried chicken. I'm just grateful to have the exposure and have some guidance from Chef Jose Garces. The mentorship is such a big piece. I mean, Chef Jose found it really important to pay it forward. They could choose my food or they could choose our resident chef's food and either way we feel like people are winning. The dining options go beyond Volver. We have concessions, a cafe is opening, and we also have catering. The cafe is a brand new, yet to be named bistro, opening at the Kimmel Center this fall. Bringing people into the Kimmel Center has been a mission of the Kimmel Center for a, a really long time. You can also do happy hour at Balcony Bar as part of Center City Sips. Balcony Bar is every Wednesday this summer until August 31st. And when the Broadway series kicks off this fall, look for specially themed cocktails. You're coming to see Lion King, Moulin Rouge, Jagged Little Pill, the cocktails have a fun twist on the show and they're really delicious. Those special cocktails are available during the run of the show. You can get them at Volver or concessions. By the way, the chef in residency program will launch with a new class of emerging chefs in September. Oh, I love it. Can't wait for that. So many diverse flavors. Well, our thanks to the Kimmel Cultural Campus for hosting us in the historic Academy of Music. Just a beautiful theater, one of Philadelphia's architectural treasures, and it feels so nice to be on this stage. We hope you're as excited <laughs> as we are about the upcoming season. So nice to see the arts and culture scene back in full force in the city. Absolutely. And we hope to see you at the theater. The theater. The theater. Of course. <laughs> Have a great week, everyone. Take care. <laughs>